Okay, just to be sure that we are in the right, uh, so let's write it here. And you have to let me know if the size is okay. Maybe I can make it a bit uh, smaller. Can you still see there? Yeah, okay. TPG 4135. Okay, and we call this course uh, Production Technology. I think it's called Field Processing and Systems. Okay, and here the, the emphasis that, that we make on this course is on the word processing, okay? We, there are many different things in a field. You probably already took a lot of courses on different things. We want to make an emphasis. We are going to study how the processing of fluids is done in the field, okay? But the thing is that the learning and the concepts that we cover here in class might be completely extrapolate, extrapolatable to other things, to other type of, of, of systems, okay? But in our course, we're going to focus our system of interest is the processing part, okay? Which is already a lot of things to cover. A lot of things are inside this process. Um, so here I have, I have just pulled this one because we always like to use that as a guideline. So the, is a process system for oil and gas in a very generic way, okay? Everything that I use to process oil and gas. And inside there, I have a lot of components, separate components that I need to make that processing happen, okay? I need flowing pipes, pumps, compression, heat transfer, heat exchanger, separators. <coughs> I have to be aware of gas hydrates. I have to dry the gas, etc. okay? I have all of these components inside, okay? Um, yeah, and there are some things what you should, you know, you should, uh, the knowledge you should have, the skills that you should have uh, to be able to develop, and the general competence that you have, okay? One thing that I like to note is that we are in an engineering course, okay? So in an engineering course, you should be able, it's very important to carry out calculation. Okay? You're not a politician, you're not a journalist, you have to be able to do stuff, okay? Not only to understand the system, someone comes, comes to you with a task, you have to be able to do calculation, okay? To understand the system and to be able to quantify. It's very nice if you know how to describe, you can make a very nice poetry about a separator, as all of these parts, but you have to be able to calculate. And that both Harald and Mariana and me, we have, we are very strong on focusing on calculating, okay? Um, yeah, so I'm going to leave just that, if for those of you who don't have it, that link there. <clears throat> um, that gives you a description of the course. If you have any question, just, you know, let me know. If you have any concern, let me know. Um, yeah, the people teaching it, like I mentioned before, is my, um, myself. Okay, maybe I can copy all of that here. I'm an associate professor. I'm working in the group the group that all of us are working in. Okay, that's my email address. There is the most effective way. If you want to need something to consult me, if you want to make a consultation time, you have a question, if you have a, you want to notify something, just write me, drop me a message. I also have my office number, and my office is here on the second floor. It's just the office 230. A very efficient way you say the office, which is in front of the toilets, okay? So you ask for the toilets, my office will be just in front. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, 
Let me just write something here before. Um, is my website. So, okay, one thing is that I'm going to be writing, okay? So you feel like you don't have to do any effort. You can just sit there and relax. The problem is when you start relaxing, you start getting sleepy, okay? And then you might be start dozing off, and then you completely shut off, okay? So that's one reason why I say even though I'm writing stuff, I'm the one writing, you're going to have the notes, okay? You should try to write yourself, okay? You should try to take your notes. Also, there is some research, some people in the pedagogical department are saying that if you write stuff, it's like helping to write things on your brain, okay? It's helping you to remember better, okay? So just keep that in mind. Even you're free, you're an adult, you're free to do what you want. You can even be looking at the ceiling, thinking, you know, what I'm saying is too boring. But I recommend if you can just write, just to keep your, your system moving so it keeps you aware. And also they say it helps you to, to, to you know, to fix the, the, the knowledge. Uh, one other thing is that the videos, so you don't really have to come. Most of the classes, my classes, I record them, okay? For the other two, I'm not sure. Harald, I'm not sure if he records. But that doesn't mean also that you don't have to come to class, okay? That gives you the flexibility if one day you're sick or one day you don't want to come, you don't come to class, you have my videos, you can watch it again. But I think that you need some interaction with, with you, okay? You need, if you have some questions, maybe one of you has a question, but it's not doesn't feel like brave enough, okay, to ask the question. If you have more friends in the group, you can discuss things, okay? You can, maybe one question that somebody ask is relevant for is also you're wondering also about the same thing okay so that's what i say i advise you even though it's not necessary we are not counting assistance i advise you to to come to class okay um yeah so one more thing so i'm going to usually and that's going to be a bit challenging for you because we have we have like we have three let me see should have select maybe this one okay okay i'm going to publish most of the uh information okay all the videos all the lectures on my website okay which is you see if you let's copy here Okay, it's empty now, but that's where I'm going to put all of my, all the PDF notes, all the videos, and also every class file that you need to use, okay? And also the homework. I'm going to paste it here for my for my part, okay? So that's what I'm saying. Harald has his system, another website that you have to check when he's teaching his part, and Mariana will probably use another system, okay? So don't be mad at us, but you know it's uh, we already have a system working. It works for each one of us. You can go to my main website here. There is some. There actually is interesting to see maybe resources. You have some resources, some things that you can use for other things. But what you really care is is about this link, okay? Where I have all the courses I teach, and then you have this TPG forty one thirty five. And you have this here. Okay, it's the first time um, that not that I'm teaching this topic, but the first time that I'm teaching this course. Okay. Uh, so let's put here. Uh, this is class notes, class files. Okay. Also some homework. We are going to see now about the evaluation. Okay and also the videos my the videos of my part are going to be posted there okay then we have uh a, we should take okay harald next i don't know if you have a picture you don't have okay but that's harald that's his email and he's sitting just not in front of the toilet, but in front of the copy machine. Okay, you find the copy machine, he's sitting in front. 
So he has much better status than I have. So sitting in front of the toilet. Okay, and Harald, he just told me also, he's going to put all of his material in he, on his website. Okay, he's here, and uh, you go below, probably here, he will put one for, for um, you know, here he's teaching actually part of a course called an introductory course and production wells. I'm going to talk about it a bit later. And probably you will have here another link with this processing, okay, processing of oil. Okay, so I'm going just to copy that and paste it here. Okay, and Mariana, Marianne, she She's also going to be teaching part of it, and I suspect she she doesn't have a website, so I suspect she's going to she's Mariana Diaz, okay, like in English Marianne Diaz, and she's a postdoc working in our group, and she will probably um, okay, she will probably use Blackboard. Okay, for all of her material. Or maybe she might use my website, we are not sure yet, but we she will probably either use Blackboard or my, my website because she doesn't, I don't think she has a website, okay? Okay, so here she will be probably using Blackboard. Okay. So you know the people more or less, uh, you know, where we're going to upload the material. You know also our contact emails, which if you have any question or any something that is, you know, burning inside you that you have to ask, you, you can contact us. Um, no, just you. be aware that we probably are going to move, all of us, okay? They are restructuring the department. They are making this new building in front. You probably have seen it. So they're going to move us around. So we are probably, the office won't be the same after February. They have said that we have to move by the end of January. Okay, so probably in February we will have another office. So that's what I'm saying, the easiest way, the safest way is you to write an email. Okay, if you try to find, I have some students, they came many times, were three weeks trying to catch me in the office, didn't manage, okay, it was not a game, just I was away. So the safest way is to write, write an email. Okay, we have a student assistant. Okay, okay it's Marcus uh, Nielsen. or teaching assistant, right? And his email contact is here. What he, I talked to him today, and what he mentioned is that um, he said, because let, let's go also on the teaching part, I think, uh, and that's his contact uh, email. Okay, so let's see what kind of uh, lectures do we have so be aware that uh, we have lectures today from 12 to 2, okay, it's exactly in this room, P12. But then the lectures tomorrow that are from 2 to 4, they're going to be in another place, okay, in another building. They're not going to be in this, in this building. They're going to be in BG13. And BG13... Okay, we are now currently here. Okay, here they're making this big building. Just, do you see my mouse? You see the mouse, yeah? Okay, so you have to walk down through this parking place and then you have to continue walking until you find this building, okay? It's called Vas, Vas Vige or something like that. So there you find, on the third floor, you find BG13. Okay, and that's where we are going to meet uh, tomorrow. 
Also, I think that the 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 sessions, the exercise sessions, they are there. But uh, what Marcus told me is that he has uh, some overlap with another course. So he's going to ask you to change the time, okay? To change to another time. He's going to send you, I think, a doodle or, or something, just to agree on a new time. Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, let's see. So I gave you... Okay, the teaching hours uh, yeah, are here. We have classes. We have no absence, abs, uh, absences programmed. Uh, we just have this uh, Easter break. Okay, so we have for now no no uh, no uh, no teaching days. Okay, um, we are going to have we are going to have guest lectures. Okay, if you want, they are not mandatory, but I really recommend. So you can get some taste from the industry side. Okay, they are really interested. They are in coming and showing uh, different problems they have. So we have, but these are actually so guest guest lectures. From the industry. Okay. And last year we had people from Statoil, that is now Equinor. We had people from uh, Leda. We had people from Lundin, I think. We had people from different from different companies. Okay. And these are going to be on Mondays, just after this class. Okay. Mondays um, from it will be from 14, 15 all the way to 15. So if you cannot attend, this is not critical. This there won't be any questions based on that going to the exam. But I think if you have the time, it will be nice if you come and just listen to to this person. They are not arranged by me, but by um, maybe those of you, you that you're in the natural gas. It's uh, called Oli Orgen Nidal. He has a course on multiphase flow, um, so he's part of that course. Okay. Um, Yeah, we will see. We will figure out. Okay, no, no problem. But just tell you that the guest lecture on Mondays at P13, P13, I think is that room here to the right, and they start actually on the 21st. Well, 21st of January. Okay, and they stop, actually, I think the last one is on the 15th of, of April, I think. That will be the last one. Okay, so again, not mandatory, but I think if you have to, I, I will really advise you to come because you will see some things that are discussed in class with a simple mimic just the concepts, and then you see how the real thing looks like in real life, and you see some of the real problems they have. And it's nice to make to start to make in the brain that switch, not to wait until you are graduated, you come to the industry, and then you see, okay, I have in mind, this should look like that. You come and you see the whole thing, and you get a big surprise, okay? So I think it's, uh, it's good on that sense. Yeah. Um, on... So that's on the guest lectures. You're going to have the exercise session. It's going to be two hours per week. Marcus, he will be leading that. Uh, and you, he will try to find a new time, okay, for, for that. And also maybe a new classroom you will need. Uh, then we have the evaluation. Okay, the evaluation, we have one final exam, which is, um, okay. that accounts for 100% of the grade. Yep, 
you know, I, I brought the... Um, I have a few things that depend on battery, right? So I have the pen, I have the mouse, and I have the keyboard, okay? So I brought today, I said, I cannot find the batteries for, for the keyboard. I will bring only for the mouse and the pen. And what happened? Exactly the keyboard got with it, you know, ran out of battery. So you can say it's a, uh, how do you call it, this, uh, this Murphy? Murphy principle. Okay, we have one main exam that will be a written exam. Will be you already have the date you have to mark it, and I think the exam is supposed to be for four hours, I think, or three hours. Okay, I think it's is either three or four hours, but then to have, get access to the exam, you have to you have to you will have some mandatory exercises. Okay, they won't account for any grade, but but they you have to deliver them in order to get access to the exam. How many will there be? I I told you it's a bit difficult to plan, but at least on my side you're going to get maybe around four. Okay, and you are you are able you 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 can deliver in groups if you want. Okay, mandatory exercise to get access to the exam. Okay. And one thing is that you're going to practice those exercises in uh, in this exercise session. Okay, that's that's the point of the exercise session. Um, what else? Okay, now about a bit about the software. Okay, um, or what software are we going to use? Okay. On my part and on Mariana's part, you are going to be using mainly Excel, okay? So, and you should bring, sometimes I, I like to do some exercises in class, okay? So I think if you have your laptop on your backpack, you, you should, it's a good practice to bring it just in case, okay? And it should have Excel installed, and you have to be sure that it has the, I think all Windows, Installations by default, they have a module called VBA, Visual Basic for Applications. Okay, but I think some installations of Mac, they don't come with this VBA. So you have to be aware if you have Mac, that be careful that that, you know, to have installed that module, okay? It's called Visual Basic for Applications. Has any of you worked before with uh, Excel BBA? No? Okay. No problem, doesn't, it's not hard. The thing that I like about Excel is that it's a graphical, it's a very graphical program. You have all the data in cells and you write data to cells, okay? Nothing gets in the memory of the computer, which, which is a good thing to just to see all the steps that you have to take. And it's also very powerful. You can also do programming in BBA. Okay, but um, then you have, uh, the next one is called MATLAB, okay, that's going to be used mainly for the part of Harald. He has all his exercise, all his things in, in MATLAB. Um, so, and he's going to upload some, for those of you who haven't had MATLAB from before, he will upload some, some information, okay. I know there is a book which is very, um, you probably, you, do you still use books, your generation, or not? Not much? Everything should be in YouTube, right? Yeah, there are a few hundreds of, uh, of books.
Yeah, I can try to search it. I think it's this one. No. Yeah, this one. I have used personally this one, and I think they have it here at NTNU. But, you know, let me find a better. Yeah, this, this book. It's nice in the sense that it takes you, you take it, you go step by step through the book, it's not very thick, and you get a very good pace for math, okay, if you, if you need. So that's a book I recommend, I'm not sure which Harald has, uh, but if you want to do something before he comes and teach, uh, I recommend using this book, okay? I don't know which version is it using, but, um, see here. You cannot see the name, right? So that's the name is Mark. Okay, Herniter. And another software you're going to use, and hopefully that will be the last one, will be a software called Hisys. And HiSys is what we call a process simulator. Okay? That allows you for oil and gas processing, really is a very big help. You have to, you know, remember when you use a software, you should understand what's behind the software. Okay, what theory, what equations is using. That makes you like a very smart user. You already know the limitations of the software, you know the equations, but actually you don't have to go and solve the whole heavy process by yourself, okay? You're going to see now it's it's a very complex set of processes that you have, okay, that go one inside another, inside another. So if you try it, you can do, of course, that by yourself, but in a normal engineering company, that will take you forever, and then you have to be sure, 100% sure, that your results are bulletproof. Okay, that you have done in every unit, you have done like uh, your proper homework. Do quality control, verify your results, that you have no mistakes. So you're going to be using, as engineers, simulators. Okay, no way to go around that. Most of you will be using simulators. But you have to be, remember, we teach the fundamentals, what's behind to make you a smart user, and then you can go and use any tool that, that you want. Okay, but not the opposite. You cannot learn by just coming and using the tool. Okay, because then you can get to the result, but it, you won't be the, the the smartest user. Okay, this simulator is in in. Uh, you can run it actually from farm. You know, now it came back to life. So what's happening? So. Okay, so if you go to farm, log with the NTNU credentials, then you go to scientific, you will find this Aspen Hysis. Okay, and the thing is that you can run it. It actually doesn't run on your computer. What you get is just the interface to put data in and, and read the data out, okay? But it's actually running it on the remote server of NTNU, okay? You here, you have to click, just close that and open this window. Okay, and there you can use it like if it was on your computer, but it's not. Okay, it's in the server in the at you know NTNU central campus. Okay, so you have to be careful when you save. Let's try to open a new here. So you have to be careful when you save. Save as. Okay, be aware to save it on your computer, not on that remote computer. Okay, sometimes it happened, a student was working on something, save it on the server, and then it got lost. Okay, so be careful, be aware of that. Okay, and it's available in, uh, in farm. So you just type farm.ntnu.no. Okay. Or we are also, depending on, I think there is a way also to get it on your computer, okay? But um, but I'm not sure you have to, yeah. I don't know if, if uh, I don't know how that's done. 
Uh, then you have here, I think you have, even here you have MATLAB someplace. Maybe not scientific, but you have math. MATLAB. Okay, so you can run here different versions of MATLAB if you don't want to have it on your computer. Uh, and there is another software, another process simulator for those of you who like. Um, this high is, is a very expensive program. Okay, we have license here. We are lucky. We have an academic license at NTNU, and you can use it. But if you want to use something, there is some people that are occupied about open source. You have also an alternative called DWSIM. Okay, it's an open source process simulator that we might use. For now, we will start with HISIS, okay? But we might use sometimes DWSIM just that you get exposure, and if you need to use in the future without a license, you, you can use DWSIM, okay? But it's very similar to HISIS. Of course, it is not maybe has it's a bit buggier, it maybe it crashes more often, but it's, it's an alternative. Okay? So just to make you aware of that, DWSIM. Okay, it's the same purpose. Okay, another process simulator. And it's, um, I think he's an engineer working at Petrobras, and he, in his free time, he's programming this. Uh, and it's really amazing what he has done. Okay, he has been on that, like, for the last seven years. But he has already a very nice uh, uh, software. Yeah. Um, now we have, you know, we have to make this reference group, okay, which is boring, but we have to make it. Is any of you, we need to have one from the regular program, one from the subsea, and maybe one from the natural gas. So, can you, maybe you're the only one from natural gas? Are you okay in being part of the reference group? No, no, just think about it. We come next, one of these classes, I'm going just to either volunteers one of you that wants to volunteer, or I, w I have to pick someone. If I don't get any volunteers, I will have to pick someone from the list, okay? Um, the, you don't have to do much work, but there, there should be like three meetings during the semester, okay? First, you have a meeting among yourselves. You have always to be collecting information from your classmates, okay, about if, for example, if, if the, you think the lectures, the pace is okay, if maybe the topics are being covered too fast, maybe if there is something that you want to improve, okay? And after you communicate with your classmates, maybe the exercises are too difficult, so you, you communicate and then you have a meeting with me and or with Harald and with Mariana, and then we try to find a plan how to fix that, okay? Let's see, let, let me just put the link here for those of you who are not. Uh... Okay, and that's just to make sure that our, the course gets, you know, we don't have any major problem that we don't address throughout the semester. And also that we are able to get it better and better. Okay, might be anything on the teaching, on the topics, on the notes, on whatever, okay. But you have to be constructive in the sense that you have to give something that you can improve, okay? For example, you might say, I don't like the face of Milan, so I cannot do anything about it, okay? I, well, I could use a paperback, but, um, okay? So I'm going to ask about it. Uh, maybe next class, maybe next week, but we have to have that soon, and you should have, um, and you have to make feel a, a small report, okay? Reference group. Okay, and I think that's all I had to to say. Um, we still have some. So now comes the, the the course. Okay, this is was the introduction. So.
Uh, but do you have any question before we go to the to the topics? Something that was missing? Yes. Hmm? No, it's uh, written. It's uh, just classical written exam. Hmm. No, exercise will probably be Blackboard. Okay. Okay, probably more questions will come, but uh, at least that's, those are the rules of the game. Um, I don't know yet, so, you know, there is some uncertainty about the number of exercises, but probably can be something, anything between 4 to 10, okay? So just be prepared, you're going to have some exercise, and probably not all of them are going to be mandatory, okay? But it's good that I say practice the exercise, then you get you know, you, then you practice for the exam. Okay, probably some of the exam questions will be very similar to, to the exercise. Uh, okay. You need to take a break. No, you already have. You still have your mind fresh and everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about it. Uh, about uh, what we are. The main topic of this course is processing. Processing of oil and gas. And we first we want to start with a simple block diagram. Okay. And you have one part which is well, let, let's call it simply the wells, okay? But the wells is basically where the extraction of the fluids from oil and gas happen from the reservoir. Okay? The wells are the interface. with the reservoir, okay? We're actually, I have a reservoir a few kilometers, a few thousand meters below the surface, and I send, I drill a well, and I make an interface, I make a path, such that the fluids can flow from the reservoir into the well, and then can proceed and go to some other place, okay? So the well sees the interface with the reservoir. After that, we have <clears throat> the gathering system, okay, that in some wells is simply, in some fields is simply very easy, okay, just simply a collection of pipes, all the wells, they come to the same place, you have just simply a collecting pipe, and then you have collected everything, okay. Some other fields are more complicated, like subsea fields, you might have a few wells here, below the surface, a few wells here, and you have to commingle all of them, okay? You have to put some pipelines in place to bring the oil and gas to the next point where you have the processing facilities. Okay? So that's typically what we call the oil and gas upstream well upstream sector. Okay? You have the 
the interface with the reservoir, you have the gathering system that might be a flow line, pipelines, okay? Sometimes we call that the network, okay? Because it looks like a network. It's a collection of pipes that all of them are, it looks like a lot of branches that are commingling to a main point. And then you have the main processing facilities, okay? And that's where we are going to focus our all of our effort of the course will be looking at this box, okay? Now, for looking at that box and under, understanding what is inside that box, you need some skills, you need some technical skills that are, you are also very useful to study the rest of the system, okay? If you learn how to calculate pressure drop in pipes, if you learn how to deal with the fluid behavior, how oil and gas separate, that's not going to be only useful here. That's going to be useful also here, also here, everywhere, okay? But all the examples we are going to make in class are going to be focused on processing, mostly, okay? And there might be some other problems that we are going to don't discuss just to be able to cover the main topics, okay? After that, you have two streams, okay? in a very simple way. We have one stream that is the gas, and we have one stream that is the oil. Okay, and typically it shouldn't be like that, but the oil, we use the green color, and the gas we use And gas, typically, I can just use it right away, okay? I can just, I can just simply send to the customer, okay? So I can simply just sell the gas, okay? Uh, that we call um, okay? While the oil, typically we have to, first we have to refine it, okay, make it into a product, okay, refining. We, there are a lot of things that we can get out of oil, okay, and finally we have the, this uh, commercialization. Okay, where we go and sell the products coming from oil. Again, I might have different products. I have gasoline, I have diesel, I have um, all, all kind of all kind of products. Okay? So that's going to be the focus of our of our course, the processing facilities. So let's look in more detail what do we have inside. And here we should put some more space. Okay, and I suggest you to make the drawing with me, okay? Such that, you know, we, we get it in our heads. So we have first, okay? We have the fluid, what is inside that box, okay? Of processing. Okay, well streams. Okay, and those are exactly all the wells that I have commingled, okay? The production of all wells that I have commingled here. And that has basically three main products, okay? I have oil, I have gas, I have water, okay? And I have all kind of other things that might be contaminants, but I have another main product that I have is sand, okay? Sometimes I have solids coming with production. And first I come to the first box, and that's like the, the crucial or the, the central point in the whole processing. It's what receives everything. Un, untreated, nothing. It receives exactly the fluids, how they were extracted from the reservoir, and it's doing something very important with them. So it's called separation and stabilization.
Okay? That means separation. I'm going to separate all of the streams that I'm getting. Okay? Because it's easier if I start to make a process to process oil, which is a liquid, okay, and has some properties. Then I have another train to process gas, and then I have another train to process water, okay? I just split, like divide and conquer, okay? That's that's actually what I'm doing, okay? After that, I get, what do I get after this process? And stabilization, the word stabilization, we're going to see, that's where we're going to look into detail these two weeks, okay? We want to make such that the gas and the oil are stable. They stay as a gas and as an oil for further processing, okay? We don't want the oil to be becoming gas again or the gas to be becoming oil again, okay? We want to stabilize and make sure that they stay in there. So you have going up, you have, okay, we are going to use the gravity analogy. Gas is lighter, so it's going up. So that's the gas. Then we have coming to the right, that's the oil. Okay, and coming down, that's the water. Okay. Now, what do I have to further do on, let's start with the water, okay? That water, what do I have to do with that water? Yeah, I have a few things, right? I can use that water to inject in the reservoir, right, to keep the pressure up. If I, if you visualize the reservoir, is like a tank, okay, where I'm taking out oil and gas, okay? And so what happens if, if you visualize, let's make a small detour, okay? If you visualize your reservoir, okay, that is like a tank, okay, and you have made, when you drill a well, you have drilled a hole in that tank, okay, and you have here a pressure indicator. Okay? When you drain and drain and drain, what should happen with that pressure indicator? The pressure should go down and down and down, right? Like in a logical sense. So I tried. I try to with water sometimes, not always, okay? Sometimes what I do, I, I inject the water on that tank, okay? Just to keep the pressure not to go down too much, okay? If I'm draining water, I try to inject water on that tank, okay? So water goes to injection, okay? Sometimes we call it pressure support. But what else can I do with the water? Take it to the ocean, dump it, okay? What you call dump it, okay? So you can just, what we call disposal, okay? You simply dump it, it can be, you can even dump it in, uh, when you are in a really critical area, if you are in the Arctic plate, in the Arctic area, for example, you don't, maybe you're not allowed to dump it into the sea, okay? You have to inject it in an underground, another reservoir is not the reservoir, but you have to dump it underground dumping, okay? But the most common case is that you are able to dump it into the ocean, okay? You're able to dump it into the sea. If you're in a land uh, facility, you are able to just dump it on a river. Okay, for example. So what we have here in this box that I'm going to put here, how should we call that? Let's call it just water processing train, okay, or water treatment. Okay, we can call it water treatment, water processing. Okay, you are simply are treating the water such that you can either re-inject it in the formation or you can dispose it, okay? Either in another formation or you can dispose it to sea. That's the main purpose, that's the destination of that water, okay? Now let's go on the oil side. What do we do with the oil? We 
we have basically a few processes, okay? That oil, and we are going to see now some numbers, okay? That oil that I separate here is not exactly 100% clean, okay? It has some water. So I have to be, I have to be able to, that's oil dehydration, okay? Desalting, and um, further stabilization. Okay. So first, let's do the same. Where is that oil going to go? Okay. That oil can go to the market, right? To a refinery. That's the final destination of that oil. But how can I, so how, how do I deliver that oil to the final destination? You can use pipe, right? You can use a pipeline. And that's very common in many fields. Or you can use basically a tanker, right? Or if you're in a land field, you can use also a truck. Okay, that's what they use in the US. Now, the stabilization is very clear, right? It will is so, sort of clear. If I have oil and I'm transporting in a container, in a tanker, I don't want it to be releasing gas, right? Because then this gas becomes flammable and then it becomes a, a safety issue. Okay, I cannot light any sources. I have to be very protective of that, of that oil. So that's why I need to do some further stabilization of that oil, okay? Just to ensure that if release some gas is very, very small and it doesn't pose a threat. I don't have to make additional safety considerations to transport that oil, okay? Now, let's talk about the other two, dehydration and desalting. Why do you think we need these two? What happens if you put salt and uh, water together, okay? Here in uh, Nihavna, okay, if you put it here on shore. That combination is bad because of what? It's conductive and then conduction gives you corrosion, right? You don't want to park your car one year in the in the port because then you come back, everything is corroded, okay? And then you have to buy a new car or your bike, okay? So these two other things, okay? One of the things is that dehydration, there are some refineries that cannot take oil with too high content of water, okay? Because they have to separate that water. But the main reason is because of corrosion, okay? You, you want... When I transport that in a tank and then on a pipe and then on another storage, I don't want it to create integrity issues, okay? I don't want to have oil leaks after some time. So that's why I have these other two processes. Now, the last guy that we are missing here is gas. So what do we do with gas? Okay, gas, I have a few things, okay? I can sell the gas, right? So let's, let's try to make it just here. Okay, that was the comment on injection. Okay. Gas, uh, we can call it destinations, okay? I can simply sell the gas, okay? And they sell it for power generation. I can also um, I can also um, uh, to use it for warming, for heating. Okay, let's call it heating. Uh, I, what else I can use it for? Power generation, heating. I can use it for some process that needs to burn. Okay, a cement plant is is very typical. You need to burn the gas, cement plant, okay? Now, that gas, so that's one of the main purposes, okay, of gas. The other thing is I can, um, I can use it for exactly the same as water, okay? I have a tank and I have to keep pressure. So I can re-inject into the formation, okay? Re-inject for 
pressure support. Or you can also do reinjection because of something that we call EOR. Okay, that is called enhanced, stands for enhanced oil recovery. Okay, and basically, because I inject that gas, it might be, we will see, maybe we don't have yet the fundamentals, but if I re-inject the gas, I'm going to increase and recover more and more oil for some reason, okay? The, the principle is that either I use it to push the oil from one well to another, okay? I have... I have, um, imagine here I have a front of oil, okay, and I have here a front of gas, okay, and I'm pushing that gas and that oil towards the well, okay, but there is another principle in which that gas becomes rich, okay, many of the oil components go inside that gas, okay, and then they come out of the well, and then I can recover that oil, okay, and there are also some other things that we are not going to talk about, but basically it's to recover more oil, okay? I can use the gas also to make power generation for the field. For the field, okay? Yeah, that typically is done by gas turbines. Okay? It can also be done by by a motor, but it's more common gas turbine. Um, and I can also use it for artificial lift. Okay, in, in particular gas lift. We're going to see maybe later. Okay. In this case, I inject gas into the wheel to try to reduce the pressure drop. Okay, to try to produce more from the well. We, we are not going to cover that, but just keep it in mind. And then another way I have is that I use it to remove the heavy components. Okay, what we call heavy components. We have the gas, it's not typically just one component, okay? But you have a bunch of other things in the gas. So if I can manage to retrieve them individually and use it for something, they, they sell for a very good price, okay? So I call, I remove heavy components, and these are uh, either LPG, a liquefied petroleum gas, okay? or uh, NGL, natural gas liquids, okay? And it's like whatever was left from this separation and stabilization, not all of the heavy components, not all of them went to the gas, went to the oil. Some of them stayed in the gas. So I add one more process to try to get that away, okay? So we have to put all of those destinations here, okay, on this block diagram that we are doing, which is a bit challenging. But let's do the first step. We hope before we do anything, anything else, we have to do okay. The gas normally it has like like air, okay. What happens if if you are Let's say you're in, how many of you, maybe one, some of you live in Muhot, right? And you're taking a shower, okay? And, and outside is very cold. What do you see close to the window? You start to get water, right? Uh, that is starting to come out of the air, okay? And it's starting to, to attach to the window. So the same thing happens in production gas. That gas, and we are going to talk about it later, but that gas some, has some water content, okay? That if I change the conditions, I have the I change the pressure or I change the temperature, that water is going to come out of solution. Okay, just like when you're taking a shower in your in your uh, in your heater. Okay, so 
To avoid that, that can be a source of many problems, okay? You're expecting gas, but then you get liquid, okay? And that can cause many different issues, corrosion, you can have uh, malfunctioning of the compressor. So you need to have what we call gas dehydration, okay? Uh, and sometimes we have here some conditioning, okay? And we're going to talk about what conditioning really means. Sometimes you need to have conditioning, okay? And conditioning basically means you have an undesired component in the gas that you want to take out, okay? Because it's going to cause some damage down. But the main point here is to dehydrate, okay? You want to take the water out of that gas. Uh, yeah, the water out of the gas. After that, I have gas compression. And after that, I have here a few options, okay? Usually, all of these boxes that I showed you here, they happen on the platform, okay? Or they happen on the onshore field. All of them, all of those processes. So far, everything that is inside here happens on the platform. When you see the platform, it has all of that inside, okay? So then you can have that this can go to... Uh, Reservoir injection. Okay, maybe let's make some more space here. You you cannot. That's a bit unfair, but I can do that. You cannot do it. Okay. <laughs> Got into trouble. Okay, here from this point where I have at high gas at high. Um, well. Reservoir injection, I can have a power generation, okay? Or I can have here that goes also to gas lift, okay? Let's try once more. Okay, reservoir injection, power generation, what else? We can use it also for gas lift. Okay, we can use it for, for if you need to create some heat in the, for heating in the, on the platform. Okay, but then after that, I have a transportation, and that usually happens not on the main platform, but outside. And you have another box where you have a few other processes happening. Okay. There is gas conditioning, okay? You have dew point control, okay? Again, you don't want to have condensate, okay? You don't want to have liquid coming out of that gas. So the dew point control is basically controlling when the liquid starts to drop out from the gas, okay? Gas conditioning, dew point control, uh, you have... Uh, NGL extraction, and you might have something called fractionation. Fractionation. Okay. And that is for what we mentioned here. You have all of these, you have all of these heavy components that they have a lot of value. If you manage to remove them from the gas and you manage to sell them. Okay, so you have basically the conditioning is you're removing something that you don't want to send it to a customer, okay, because they are dangerous. We are going to see now what these things are, okay. Dew point, you don't want it to drop all of these liquid heavy components, control. NGL extraction, you're extracting this. It's like an oil light but very light, okay, very desirable, this NGL, okay. Or you have fractionation when you even can get exactly, I need, for example, ethane, you need propane, you need butane, you, you can do that with fractionation, okay? 
And after that, I have two ways, these guys that I have here, I have two ways to send it to the customer, okay? Either someone in a power plant, either for heating. I have one way, which is pipeline, okay? Or the other, which is LNG, right? Liquefied, don't be confused about all the letters, okay? NGL, natural gas liquid, LNG, liquefied natural gas, And that's basically basically everything we have, okay? Which is a lot, okay? Okay, so we have separation of gas, oil, and water, stabilization, meaning that this oil and gas must be stable. They don't have to drop significantly more oil or the oil doesn't have to release significantly more gas, okay? Then the water, I either inject it for pressure support in the reservoir, or I dispose it either in a reservoir or dump to sea or a river. So I have to treat it, that water to make sure that, you know, it's up to standards. We are going to see now what do we need to make water disposal. The gas, it can go to all of these things, okay? But the first step is to dehydrate, to avoid that I will have water and avoid, if I have water, I have corrosion, okay? And for example, if I want to compress, that gas cannot have any liquid, okay, to compress it. Compressor doesn't like at all liquid, okay? Then comes compression. Up to here, everything happens on the platform, up to here. Compression I can use for reservoir injection, power generation, gas lift, okay, I can use it for heating. And a big chunk of that I send, if this is a platform, let's make a line here. Okay, that will be, to up here will be platform, or also FPSO. Okay, and from here will be onshore. This part will be done on shore. Okay. And then you have conditioning to remove all of these dangerous or undesired uh, things that the gas has, dew point control, NGL extraction, these liquids that are highly valuable, fractionation, if I want to, buy, to, to exactly extract butane or propane or ethane, uh, and then I can send to the customer using a pipeline, or I can use LNG, okay? Basically, I take the gas, convert it into a liquid, ship it on a tanker at very low temperature, and receive it in another place and convert back to gas, okay? Let me just put that up. Okay, that clear, more or less. Yep. Okay. So now before we finish, okay, I just want to show you the what we're going to be, so each one of us, okay, uh, Mariana, Harald, myself, we're going to be showing parts of these boxes, okay, how the things in those boxes are done, okay? And my first task now, I'm going to show you how this box looks like, the separation and stabilization. And with that, I hope we, we finish maybe. Yeah, I think that will be interesting, but that will take some more time. Let's keep separation for tomorrow and just do something very quickly here. To be able to Okay, in each one, each one of these boxes, to be able to pass from one box to the other, you have to fulfill certain criteria, okay? It's like if this is a, a 
you know, this is a college, okay, and you want to go to the university, you have to fulfill certain criteria, okay? Your grades have to be some, uh, you know, you don't have to have criminal records, all kind of things, okay? So let's see what are the requirements that you have in every box, okay? Just to be sure what, what are we talking about. And so let's make another try to repeat, okay? I don't want to cheat because then you don't. Let's, let's make it here. We have separation and stabilization. Okay. And from here we get three things, okay? <coughs> Gas, we get oil, and we get here water. Now, the inlet of that separation, and here I'm going to challenge a bit your units, just because I was lazy and didn't change them, okay? Here we have pressures of 1,800 PSI G, okay? And 700 and to 750 PSI G, okay? More or less on that range, okay? Are all of you familiar, right, with those units? Yes, okay? Uh, the okay, remember you have to absolute and gauge, okay. right, for pressure. When pressure is measured, okay, remember you have two scales, okay, one is absolute, and that we say when pressure is measured exactly from zero, okay, and then you have the relative when pressure is measured from 14.7 psi, okay, or 1.01325 bar. Okay. So to the measurement you have, let's say you have this whole line, okay? You have this measurement here, okay? Which is 1,800. PSI uh, A, okay? Absolute. How many PSI G will that be? Okay, PSIG, I just measure it from here, right? From this new reference that I have. Okay, so it will be 1800 minus 14.7. That's the number in PSIG. Okay, you have to be very careful. That's a very, like, a very, why, why we do it like that? When you put a pressure gauge, okay, just in ambient conditions, it's going to read, it should read really 1.01325. But they build it such that it shows simply zero. But we are not now, we are not at zero pressure, okay? Now we have at a pressure which is close to this number, okay? So that's why every gauge measurement that you see is going to have that pressure that is showing plus the pressure, the atmospheric pressure, okay? Which is 14.7 or 1.01325, okay? So you be careful. In, in this course, we're going to use pressure units in PSI A, absolute, for all equations, almost for everything. But in many places, you're going to see reported in PSI G, especially in things from the industry. Clear? Yeah? Okay. Okay, now that water that comes here Okay, let, let's start with the water, okay? That water has, that water has a content, okay? That water is not 100% clean, okay? It has a content of oil in that water. That's a bit oily water. And the content of oil in water Okay, we call it OIW, okay, oil in water content. And that's because the separation process we have that we are going to see tomorrow, okay, what do we have inside that box, is not good enough to take, to remove all the oil, okay? It's going to have some oil, which is not much, but I cannot dump it right away, that water, because it still has a significant amount of oil. And that oil is given in units that are 500 to 1,000, P, P, M, and here I add W, okay? 
what is ppm parts per million okay ppm stands for parts per million okay ppm okay and what does it mean how much oil do we have in that water if we say it's 500 first look at the last okay look at the last letter of ppm it says w w stands for weight okay so it tells you that i have of the same unit i have one part over 500 parts of a unit of weight divided by 1 million okay units of weight okay that means that would mean i have Let's, let's put it in in s in in weight units okay so what is what would be one ppm let's say it will be one milligram right over what unit do i have to put here one milligram of oil per one kilogram right is that correct? Yeah. Let's put change everything to the same unit. Okay. How much? How many milligrams? How many grams is a milligram? One e to the minus three, right? Okay. And here I have grams divided by one e to the three grams, right? So that gives you at the end one e to the minus six. Okay and with no units a dimension okay that means if i have one ppm of oil that means that i have one milligram of oil per one kilogram okay and the the requirement i have here or the the typical output of that water it has 500 to a thousand milligrams per kilogram of oil okay but be careful you can use any unit that you want as long as the units are the same Okay, you can use milligram, you can use pounds, you can use anything, but it should give you the same number. Okay, so that, then I use, then I go to this water processing and water treatment. Okay. And then after that, it comes out at if I want to make reinjection, okay? Okay, in the reservoir, that number I'm not hundred percent sure. Sorry for that, but that I think is around hundred ppm weight, okay? Around hundred ppm. So it's much easier for me if I could reinject all the water, okay? Because I don't have to make such a, I just have to clean, take one fifth of, of the oil in the water, okay? However, if I want to have it for uh, disposal to see, okay, then I have to have, it should be less than uh, a 40 ppm weight oil in water. And many platforms in the North Sea, they are operating with 14, 17, okay, ppm. So I have to reduce the whole, the whole purpose of this box is to reduce from 500 all the way or from 1,000 all the way to 40. So it's a reduction if you see how many times? 20 times, yeah? It's a reduction of 20 times the amount of oil. I'm cleaning, removing that oil, removing, removing until I've, I'm able to meet the criteria to to dispose. Okay, now on the other, let's see what do we have. We have this, which is desalting and dehydration and desalting. That oil that comes here typically has. In this case, we're going to talk about water in oil content. Remember, it's mostly oil and has some water of, and here we say 1 to 3%. We don't use ppm because the number is very big, okay? And this is, 
in volume, okay? That means that if I have the volume of oil, volume of oil divided by the total volume, okay, this will be between one, between 0 0.01 and 0 0.03, okay? And that comes typically because, again, it's a limited process. I cannot remove exactly all the water in the oil, okay? One to three percent. After this process, okay, to be able to send it to a pipeline, send it to a refinery, send it with a truck, okay, I have a few, uh, quite a few requirements, okay? First of all, the API, all of you know what API is? API gravity, okay? The definition of API gravity, it's, I also forget, 141.5 divided by gamma oil minus 131.5. Okay, and what is gamma oil? Is the specific gravity of the oil, right? We call it specific gravity of the oil. Of oil, okay. And this is the density of the oil and let's see why I put a bar, okay, why I'm putting a bar on top. Density of the oil divided by the density of the water. And the bar means at standard conditions. Okay, and that means if you are talking about uh, SI units or Norwegian SI units, 1.01325 bar and temperature 15.56 Celsius, okay? So I go, uh, and this guy is typically a thousand, okay? So if I go and I measure the density of the oil, okay? What is the density of the oil, typically? What is the density of water? Okay, density of water, I gave it here, okay? But uh, it's missing the units, okay? Kilogram per cubic meter. Yes? Okay. That means that one liter of water weights approximately one kilogram, okay? Now, the density of oil is typically something can be maybe very low, but now it's not very typical, maybe from 700 all the way to 900. Okay, these are typical numbers. Now, in the oil industry, we are a bit strange, okay? We don't use that. We just don't tell you it's 700, 900, but we use the API gravity. That means the API gravity goes from, and that's the number I was going to write here, goes from 8 to 65, And then you have to translate how much eight means in, in, in density, okay? Or in specific gravity. You will see that it's actually the opposite, the scale. If API is low, okay? If this API number is very low, what does it mean? That this density, that this density here is very big, right? So what happens if this API is 10? How much is the specific gravity of the oil? Okay, let's make that, that and with that we close the session today. So let's say for an API of 10. Okay. What is the specific gravity of the oil? 
Okay, so I have here 10 um, plus 131.5 divided by E. So that tells you that the density of the oil is, specific gravity of the oil is equal to 1. Okay, that means that the oil has exactly the same density as water. Okay, so an API of 10 means basically same density as water. Okay, when API is less than 10, that means heavier than water. Okay, when API is bigger than 10, that means lighter than water. Okay, so that's why you see here, you have all the way up to eight, maybe some very viscous, very heavy fields, they have up to eight, but on the higher end, you might have 65, okay, which is a very light disc, we are close to 600, okay, to 700 kilogram per, per cubic meter. Okay, so that's, uh, I think that's all we have time to cover today. So tomorrow we are going to continue um, fulfilling the requirements in these boxes, and then we are going to go to this multi-stage process, okay, to see how it looks like and what do we need to analyze it. Before we close, any question? No? Okay, see you tomorrow in uh, Bailinda.